you wanted to talk about a sky too wide and earth too deep. That's a perfect poem to talk about editing because I I I wrote about it in true life. I Are think. We, I'll I'll have to have have you start again if you if you've started the conversation. Are we starting again? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay. Um, this is a this is a poem that when I first brought it to the Uptown Poetry Group, I hadn't broken it up like I have the sex and journal twelve oh six a.m. or whatnot. And so this was this is a perfect example that shows how open minded I am. And because there was this dumb woman in her mid mid thirties, this porky dumb woman, PC, wrote utter crap, cliches in every line. She was constantly passive aggressive against all the people at the poetry group. I remember she she thought Bruce Ariel was retarded or something. She made a nasty comment about him, um, and so forth. And so I read this poem, and people were saying, oh, it's got great things, this or that. But I knew something was a little off, and she made an offhanded comment, something like, uh, I forget what now, but something related to time, and wouldn't it be, uh, you know, and uh, something about time. And I said, okay. I said, well, if I remember correctly in the, in the True Life memoirs, she stated something akin to, uh, is this in the present or in the past? Oh yeah, something like that. Yeah, see, the good thing I wrote that down. I don't, I don't remember the exact thing, but uh, yeah. And so I decided to break it up. And uh, this is one of my earliest. This is probably ninety five, ninety six. This is one of my earliest big poems in the sense where I'm, I'm, I'm sprawling. Um, and so I said, oh, that's interesting. And so it's a perfect example of where I went back, sp split up the the chronological journal sections made, or made them from a, a, a section that that was running uh, through the poem in one section and it worked and it, 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 it and and so editing was good and but more so than just going back and revising something because I'm I'm someone who slowly builds I rarely cut things from a book um, I've only got one book where I cut some stuff from uh, I forget which book I remember Jessica had recommended it um, but but then I re later reused some of those sections in a, a later book. But the fact that I was open to this moronic woman, uh, her offhanded comment shows you have you can't cut things off because even a more you know the old saying about you know twice twice a day even a bro a broken clock is going to have the correct time, and every so often a moron is going to say something that even if they had no idea what they were talking about or, or whatnot, or, you know, is going to make an interesting comment. So that's a good example. You have to be open to things. That's not to say that you give people uh, credence beyond what they, uh, what they deserve, but never cut yourself off and be so full of yourself that you, you dismiss people out of hand. And a lot of people have, you know, will say, because I said, oh, Dan says he's a great poet or whatnot. Ever since that City page Pages story, that's somehow I'm arrogant. I'm probably the least arrogant and the least egocentric, not only person, but artist that you're going to meet because I will go back and I will be ruthless. Like I said, I don't have much that I need to edit, but I, if, 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 if I'm writing a, a chapter in a book, and I know something's not working. I'll say, "Well, fuck it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in uh, a character who's gonna disrupt something. Um, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take a different point of view. I'm going to structure. I'm going to do this, that, and other thing. I, I, when it comes to art and criticism, I am, I am just the. Uh, That's I, very interesting that you say that. So, in in editing, this is just a technical aspect, but you'll have a scene that doesn't work and you'll just throw a, a wrench in there, so to speak, and it, it will redeem it in a way. So if, if it's a, it, a seemingly bad piece, then all of a sudden you add this one element and it will, it will uh, make it deeper. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And in some of the poems that we just talked about, um, you know, uh, I, 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 in, I in, in, so in, in a way it's a, a better analog for, why building might be superior to sculpting, although they both have their merits. Well, uh, well, a sculptor ha has a, a, a small. I'm, uh, you know, if you look at a, a lot of the garbage today, you uh, and you people just uh, type, 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 type. One of the problems with uh, with uh, that people quoted about fifteen, twenty years ago, or talking about was that that word processes allowed people to just jizz very easily. Whereas if you had to actually go back and rewrite actual physical pages on a typewriter, 
it blend it it instilled in the writer a sense of concision. And there's something to be said about that. Uh, but uh, sculpt a sculpture. If you have a block of granite, it's a finite piece. So the sculptor can can see. You know, the great sculptors say they can see what's in there. They just remove the excess. It's not excess. It's excess that's natural. So when you're talking about uh, writing. That's not excess that's natural. That's just someone not knowing what they're doing and trying to cut back. I always have an idea what I'm going to do. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm constantly just building like Lego uh, Lego or uh, Tinker to Tinker Although toys. editors need to learn how to actual, actually sculpt to the idea that you're speaking of before. Because some of the writing is so incompetent that it needs to just go. Uh, and yeah. that, that's an excellent example why you're not egocentric.